Uh, it's funny to see different people pronouncing uh, this project uh, differently and we have quite interesting stories, we can talk about them. So the pronunciation, at least Czech or Slovak is TOT. And uh, we will talk about TOT's open database for Python developers. Uh, before we start, my name is Fridolin and uh, I would like to ask if there are any Python developers or somebody who tried Python. Okay, I see some hands. So uh, we will talk about Python and uh, first we will introduce what TOT is, uh, why it uh, was developed and I will also talk about a uh, team that is behind TOT. Uh, then uh, we will do live demo and uh, I will show you uh, how TOT can be extended by your contributions so anyone can contribute to TOT and use it. If time allows us, I will talk also about security and give you some references. So TOT started in 2018 as a research project in uh, uh, office of the CTO that was uh, or team AICOE that was uh, AI team uh, in office of the CTO. It's expanded and it's now pretty pretty large. If you are interested in it, uh, we have YouTube channel where you can browse uh, videos and content that we publish regularly. And you can al also follow a uh, project on Twitter. Uh, it's dot station Twitter handle. Uh, the main mission behind this project was to help Python developers and data scientists to create and ship healthy Python, ap Python applications. And the project itself has multiple parts. Uh, we have also collaboration with Pulp team. And uh, in this talk, I will focus on Tot Resolver. That is the second uh, item in the listing. But feel free to browse uh, other uh, parts. They might be interesting. Okay, so first, let's take a look at uh, Python Cloud Resolver and why it was uh, developed. If you experienced something with Python, you probably know PIP or PIPenv Poetry. These are basically resolvers that resolve application dependencies. So you can type PIP uh, install Flask and PIP will automatically check what Flask versions are available and will bring Flask into your environment so you can develop some Flask application. If you take a look at the last bullet, you see TOT, that's the project that pronunciation is dif uh, different and hard. Uh, but basically the main idea behind TOT is that latest software is not always the greatest choice. So sometimes you don't want to install the latest Flask version available because it can have some bug that is not fixed yet, or uh, it has some performance issues in your environment and things like that. So um, if you take a look at architecture, uh, it's different from the resolvers that were mentioned. Uh, PIP, PIP and Poetry resolve application dependencies locally on your machine. But in the case of TOT, uh, you send application requirements to the cloud, then there's something happened and uh, you get back uh, application dependencies in the form of log file. So each version pins each package pin to a specific version together with justification why you should use that specific uh, package. Uh, under the hood, uh, they're sent more information, so information about your operating system, hardware, or static source code analysis, and this all helps uh, dot resolver to select package versions uh, based on your runtime environment that fit your runtime environment and uh, TOTS Cloud Resolver uh, uses knowledge about uh, these Python dependencies so uh, it can resolve really high quality application dependencies. Okay, so if you're interested in TOT and you would like to try it, we provide tutorial uh, that is called Managing Security in Python Applications with uh, the TOT Cloud Python Resolver. It's a tutorial uh, that will guide you through steps required, uh, how to set up your environment to run uh, TOT or contact TOT and use it. Uh, if you start uh, with this tutorial, 
uh, you will be first uh, setting up your environment and you will need TAMOS uh, CLI. TAMOS is a command line interface uh, that uh, knows how to contact TOT backend, knows how to send that information to the cloud, wait for uh, re the resolution, and then um, knows how to, for example, manage your environment locally and uh, install dependencies and things like that. Okay, so now let's go to uh, demo part. Uh, as mentioned, uh, there is that uh, tutorial and it links to a repository that is called CLI examples. That repository lives in TOT station organization and that's basically uh, what I will show now. Uh, so first we will install TAMOS. Uh, it's already installed in my environment, but you will see uh, that uh, now we have uh, environment ready to uh, talk to TOT. If we take a look at uh, repository content, we see that there is some application that is called Game of Life, and that's the application that we will run. You can also see a pip file that states application dependencies. Uh, it's very simple application, so there are just few uh, dependencies. Uh, we are running Python 3.8, and what we can also check, we can check uh, TOTS configuration file. Uh, TOTS can automatically generate this configuration file for you in your project uh, directory, and it basically states uh, inputs to that uh, recommendation engine or to that resolver so that uh, it resolves application dependencies specifically for your uh, environment. Tamos config automatically uh, generated this uh, configuration file. It automatically detects what uh, or how your environment looks like. So here you see uh, CPU, GPU, I'm not running any GPU, uh, what uh, version of Python I'm using, and uh, also uh, any additional uh, dependencies such as OpenBLAS if you uh, run some data science applications or, or machine learning applications. So this is the configuration file. You can adjust it by hand or uh, keep uh, the automatically generated one. And what we do now, we can uh, call Tamos advice, and in this case, um, uh, TAMOS collects information uh, from the configuration file, sends it together with information about your application dependencies, and sends this information to, to the cloud. The resolver does its job, and here you can see information that is provided by the resolver. Uh, we can see two tables. The first one is application stack guidance, that is some generic information and suggestions, uh, for example, that I should use version range specifiers uh, because uh, that's a good practice. Uh, or uh, information that some packages were removed because they have known issues in the runtime environment uh, that I'm using. Then you can see the second table that is recommended stack report. And in this table, you can see information per package. So here you see, for example, information about package click that is used in my application, and also uh, some uh, security-related advisories, for example, below in these versions. Uh, in this version has uh, some uh, CVE, so I should be aware that there's some security vulnerability in uh, my environment. If I'm fine with that, I can install uh, dependencies and run my application. But let's say I'm not fine with uh, these security, uh, these vulnerabilities that are present. So what I can do, I can ask TOT once again to resolve my application dependencies, but this time uh, without uh, pa packages that would introduce some security vulnerabilities to my application. So once uh, TOT computes uh, results, you can see uh, now I'm running some uh, pillow that has, uh, that doesn't have uh, that security vulnerability. And in this table, you can also see uh, which versions of pillow were uh, removed because of uh, CVE that was present in them. Okay, so now let's uh, do TAMOS install. Uh, in this case, TAMOS creates virtual environment for my application, installs uh, dependencies, and once these dependencies are installed, 
uh, I can run my game. Uh, I will silently pass no pedantic, that's because uh, I'm not running Fedora as in uh, the configuration file. And uh, now I can see uh, uh, our game. So I can play game of life. So here you can see AI. Okay, uh, so that was our demo. Just to uh, explain that you no know, pedantic, if I would run uh, it this way, uh, my operating system configuration does not match uh, the configuration stated in uh, TOTS YAML configuration file. So that's a check uh, that is done uh, because I'm running Ubuntu instead of Fedora. Okay, so that was our uh, demo. Uh, you saw a lot of information. You saw these two tables. Uh, they provided information about packages and also runtime environment that I'm using. Now let's try to extend knowledge about uh, these packages that we consume and uh, try to provide a uh, way how to enhance the resolution process so that we get high quality uh, dependencies. The whole resolution process uh, is uh, modeled as a resolution pipeline. This resolution pipeline is made out of pipeline units and basically they accept inputs. Uh, then uh, during the resolution, each package goes through a pipeline that is constructed and uh, there is implemented a reinforcement learning algorithm based on TD learning that selects the most appropriate versions for your uh, application. So now uh, let's try to check how these pipeline units are implemented. You can uh, implement them directly in Python. In that case, you provide implementation in the in a resolver's code base, but you can also uh, use declarative interface that uses YAML files to describe how the resolution process that selects uh, specific packages uh, should look like and what actions should be taken during that resolution process. Uh, this declarative interface in the form of YAML files is available in a prescriptions repository that is available in TOT Station uh, organization. Anyone can contribute. Uh, you can see these YAML files as YAML files uh, that are used in uh, Kubernetes or OpenShift that describe desired state of a cluster. In this case, prescriptions describe how the desired resolution process should look like. Uh, we can uh, take a look at uh, this database. So here you see TOT Station prescriptions. Um, you can also browse uh, documentation, which will uh, explain how you can write uh, these YAML files and how you can uh, benefit uh, from this concept. And we can quickly check, uh, for example, some prescriptions. As you can see, uh, the directory structure is pretty uh, large. Uh, you can find prescriptions specific to some packages. So for example, we can check uh, prescriptions for a machine learning uh, library that is called TensorFlow. And uh, some prescriptions are automatically generated by bots, but some prescriptions are provided by users. So for example, we can take a look at this prescription that states uh, that if uh, TensorFlow in these versions is going to be resolved, then uh, together with H5Py, that uh, is uh, another library, it's a dependency of TensorFlow, uh, there's no issue, like these two libraries cannot be installed together because uh, TensorFlow maintainers did uh, uh, overpinning issue and uh, in that case uh, TensorFlow as a library does not behave correctly. So this prescription basically heals application dependencies and makes sure that compatible versions are uh, resolved. Another example can be that pillow in version 8.3.0 cannot be installed together with NumPy. This is a known issue. It's reported upstream. It was spotted after a pillow release. And when you uh, install these two libraries and you try to run the application, you get this uh, error. 
So again, uh, we can provide a prescription to fix it and uh, anyone who uses uh, TOT uh, will not need to debug application, will not need to check what's wrong, uh, why application crashes, uh, but uh, the recommendation engine, uh, the, the resolver will make sure that correct libraries are resolved. Uh, this is, uh, these examples were uh, on Python level, but TOT resolver can take a look at, for example, Python interpreter version that you are using. Uh, you can also specify requirements on CUDA, CU, DNN, and other libraries uh, like OpenBlast mentioned earlier. You can also write prescription specific for operating system, and if you use containerized environment, then uh, the resolution process can be very specific to that containerized environment and can take a look at, for example, uh, glibc version that you have uh, installed or other RPMs. So uh, we are fixing basically this uh, known uh, XKCD uh, when you have one small uh, package in your wall infrastructure and it breaks. I think uh, there were uh, pretty nice examples, especially in NPM world when uh, things bro were broken because of maintainers, maybe from Nebraska. Okay, so we have uh, some time left. Um, TOT uh, can also guide you with, with respect to security. Like originally TOT was called AI DevSecOps and um, it accumulates information from various sources and can uh, guide you uh, with respect to, to security. So if we take a look at our uh, output that was uh, produced by the recommendation engine, you can spot, for example, information about uh, pinned uh, dependencies. So if a project uses pinned dependencies or if it honors some best practices or uh, if there's branch protection uh, made. These uh, information are aggregated from a uh, database that is provided by OpenSSF. And um, this, um, this organization basically accumulates information about open source and uh, taught, uh, automatically, uh, uh, automatically ingest this information. Uh, taught also gathers information about CVE, that was a thing that we've seen. So uh, for that purpose, uh, we use advisory database, which again is a database of known vulnerabilities. So you can see uh, packages and uh, again, YAML files that declare uh, CVE information for uh, Python specific uh, packages. This is a um, database directly maintained by, uh, by PA. And if you use containerized environments, then you can benefit from uh, scans that are done by Quay, and we aggregate information about uh, RPMs and, uh, and uh, known vulnerabilities on RPM level. Okay, so if you are interested in TOT, feel free to browse uh, our webpage, that is totstation.ninja. You should be able to find more information, uh, also uh, linked demos and tutorials. Uh, that we provide, and here are some references. So if you like to read and dive into technical details, uh, we provided a few articles and series about uh, TOTS resolver, TOTS resolution process, and why certain technical decisions were made and uh, why uh, you could use TOT. TOT is an open source project. API endpoints are available to the community, so uh, Anyone can use it and anyone can contribute knowledge about uh, Python dependencies or Python application stacks so the whole community can, can benefit. And this way I would like to thank you and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Sorry? Why pyramids? Uh, so, Tot is god of wisdom, it's an Egyptian god, but it's also Tot station. I think it uh, originates Star Trek, is it Star Trek? Or what is it? It's some TV show? Hmm? TV series.
And if you want to check our endpoints, they are available in Kemenu, that's some starship, if I remember correctly. So we were really pity when you, we were really uh, picky when uh, naming things, and it creates a lot of fun. Any other question? So the question was uh, where uh, you can find uh, our slides or uh, these references that were in presentation. Uh, we did uh, talks on different conferences, uh, DevConf Mini including, and here you can find slides. Uh, it's .station slash talks, so talks repository in .station organization, and I pushed 33 minutes ago these slides, so you can find them uh, here. With all, all the references, and they should be clickable, maybe when you download it. Yes? So the question was if we would like to support other language ecosystems, right? Um, that's a good question. Uh, Todd, as of now, is very specific to Python. Uh, but these ideas like prescriptions, the resolution process, or, uh, or uh, cloud-based resolution process uh, could be adopted to other language ecosystems. Uh, I think NPM is a very nice candidate. Um, but as of now, the whole infrastructure is written in Python. There are parts that are written in C, C++, but the core infrastructure and also the resolution is very specific to, to Python. So uh, if there are volunteers to extend, uh, I think it could be very valuable. Are there any other questions? Okay, then thank you. Thank you.